Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. So today I'm going to be giving you my unbiased review of the Armor Detail Supply Hero. This is their Arisus wash. And um, we'll go over the product description. I'm going to do a bunch of empirical testing just like we did with uh, Coach Cami Arisus wash. And by the end I'm going to be giving you my formed opinions about this product. So stick around till that. Now starting with the product description, you can get this product here at carzilla.ca. I'll put the links below for you guys to check it out. And by no means I am sponsored or affiliated with this company. This is a total independent review. I paid for this product with my own money. And uh, I do have an affiliate link at Carzilla, so you can shop and per purchase uh, whatever you like, not just this product, and you get a 5% discount co code. And this helps the channel to also make a small commission so we can just keep buying more products to do more reviews. Uh, and this is the way we ethically grow our channel. Uh, I don't do sponsored videos and uh, I don't plan to either. So I just wanted to be transparent about that. Now, the price for this 16 ounce bottle is a little bit on the higher end. You're going to pay $26 Canadian. And I think they have this uh, in a gallon size for about $93 Canadian as well. And uh, presentation wise, I have to say that uh, this company here, I, I think by far to date, they have the best logo, the best presentation on their bottling. Really nice and classy. So aesthetically speaking, uh, I really enjoyed this presentation. Now in the back of the bottle here, you will find a QR code which will take you to their website. And uh, also they do have their SDS sheets available when you click onto each product. So that's really nice that we get access to their SDS sheets. Uh, the one thing with the SDS sheets that uh, I had a couple concerns with though is the, there's not a lot of information on there. And because this is a newer company and a newer product, uh, it looks like either the company didn't do a lot of uh, R&D to provide more data for us. Uh, there's a lot of uh, blank uh, spots that are not filled in terms of safety on the SDS sheets. So that means that uh, they pretty much have this product out in the wild and we are supposed to find out at our own risk. And that's a little bit worried. So it doesn't put a lot of faith when I'm spending this much money uh, to get a product that I don't have that reassurance uh, in terms of uh, safety or um, what this product's limitations is or more information about this product, period. So I'm hoping to see more updated information on their SDS sheets as they go, um, as these guys are a newer company. So in the back here, the directions and the instructions are a little bit small for us to read. So the one suggestion I would have is they could enlarge it a bit. There is lots of room here on the side for them to uh, change up their fonts a little bit. Now, when it comes down to smell, even though we don't encourage people smelling products, uh, this does have a very light, uh, fruity smell, I guess, but it's not really pleasant. Uh, I didn't really care for it myself. I think it's very mild, but it's not really uh, enjoyable. It just has a very mild chemically uh, spell to it, which is not a big deal. But when I saw the pink color, I was expecting to have a nice little fruity scent, but that wasn't the case here. Now this product here is a pH neutral formula and it's pretty much a polymer surfactant base. I guess the backbone is what they call it is based of a SiO2 backbone, which is going to leave a minimum protection and nothing to really alter or affect uh, your existing last step protection, but uh, it is supposed to be very effective, uh, especially when it comes down to coated vehicles. Uh, this product here will complement your maintenance washes. And they have all the dilution ratios on the back. So you can use this at a 256 to one standard dilution ratio for rinseless wash and pre-soak. Uh, 128 for a clay lubricant and 64 to 1 as a waterless wash. I'm going to be putting all of these to the test and you'll be surprised with the results we're going to get. And we are working in a control environment at about 21 degrees with about 30% humidity. So let's put it to the test and uh, see what here is all about. All right, first things first, we are going to dilute Hero 256 to 1. And uh, so that's two ounces in four gallons of water here. And you don't necessarily need four gallons of water. You could just uh, use a couple of gallons, but because of the uh, purposes of the test, we do need a little bit more solution. So we do see it did suds up, so um, it does have some surfactants in there. And we are gonna be working with soft water at 260 ppm. And the pH diluted is about 8.3. And P 
pH on the product NEAT is around 6.5 on my meter. Next, we're going to also fill up our sprayer with some of the solution at 256 to 1. And we're going to be using a ultra safe sponge and a microfiber mitt and our clay towel for all the testing. Now, before we get into any testing, we're going to be using the clean solution. And here we have a brand new acrylic panel. And I'm going to test both wash mediums here with a clean solution uh, just to see if we're going to see any marring. And here we're just gauging the lubrication of the product as well as the safety of the mediums we're going to be using. So both mediums are clean and we're going to give them 10 strokes up and down. And then we're going to dry it with a microfiber drying towel. We have here the double twist wrist from the rack company. And as we see, we're looking at the acrylic panel. Besides the ghosting we see because the panel is new, that's not scratching. We don't see any vertical marring. So both mediums are safe and the solution seems to have lubrication. And so now we're going to do the same test on the same panel after we have used the solution. So the solution is contaminated and so are the wash mediums. So here we are going to give them uh, 10 strokes up and down each uh, on the same panel, no pressure. And we want to see now if the wash mediums have scratched or marred the surface. And so I'm wiping the other direction just so we don't have any scratching from the towel potentially. And so as we see the microfiber mitt did indeed mar the surface. Whereas the sponge, I don't see any marring. I only saw a couple minor hairlines near the middle section there. But overall, it was the safer option. I didn't see any marring or any damage onto this panel from that sponge. So for the next test, we're going to be using three dilution ratios, 128 to 1, 64 to 1, and 32 to 1 on a polished uh, acrylic panel again. And we're going to give 15 passes up and down with a clay towel for each dilution ratio. And so as we see the 128 to 1, we do see marring. We also see marring at the 64 to 1. And we also see marring at the 32 to 1 as well. Now I want to check the safety of the product. So this, this is a good way to gauge if a product is caustic or not. So what we did here is we took room temperature water and we temped it. And then we added just a little bit of the solution, just a drop. And if you see a change in temperature more than three degrees, that means that the product is toxic and it's not really ideal to use. Uh, so here it only jumped by uh, one uh, degree. So the product is safe. Now for the next test here, we are going to mimic your bucket and we want to look at the encapsulation properties of this product. So I diluted a 256 to one. So 256 mLs to one mL of product. And I'm just using my dirt simulator here. So we just want to create some murky water. And now we just kind of want to see if the murky water is going to clear up. We just want to see the encapsulation. And surprisingly, I do see that the water is clearing up a bit. Um, and so now I'm going to add an ounce of ONR since ONR is kind of like the pinnacle of encapsulation technology. I just want to see if we're going to notice a difference in the water clearing up here. And sure enough, we do notice a significant difference, but um, there's still some contaminants as well into the solution. So ONR did a little bit better than here in terms of encapsulation. Now for the next test here, I want to check the waterless wash. They offer a 64 to 1. 
and I did polish an acrylic panel and I'm going to leave it outside for a week just to collect some dust and whatever dirt from the elements outside just to mimic a waterless wash. So the panel here after a week we see it is contaminated. Perfect enough for a waterless wash test. And as we see here it's only dirt on top there is no marring because the panel was polished. So here I'm going to use two different uh, solutions. I'm going to use a 64 to 1 as recommended by Hero and then I'm going to use the 256 to 1 and lightly lift with a plush towel. Here we have the Edgeless 400 by the Rag Company. And as we see, both sides did mar. Uh, and there's two things here that could happen. It could be friction from the towel or it could be um, chemical etching. Uh, the higher the concentration typically in chemicals, they do create more heat and friction. Therefore, they do create marring. So for the next test here, I want to check the degreasing capabilities of the product. I want to see how powerful it is uh, breaking down any oil films. So we have motor oil on the left side, a thin film that I created. And then on the right side, we have a thin film of some polish. So I'm going to spray the panel down at 256 to 1 and I'm lightly going to lift with a towel. We're going to do one pass. And we're not looking for scratching here. We just want to see the degreasing capabilities of the product. So after one pass, we notice on the motor oil side that there's still a film left behind and there's still some haziness and a slightly uh, light film left behind on the polish side. So we're going to hit it again and we're going to give it a couple more passes now just to kind of see if uh, a little bit more agitation helps remove the film. And as we notice on the motor oil side, it did a lot better, but there's still some haziness. There's still a film left behind, so it didn't completely remove it. Uh, on the polish side, it did remove about 95% of it. There's still a little bit left on the bottom there. So now for the next test, I want to see how safe this product is again. And I'm going to uh, leave on the panel the solution to dry for a day. So on the right side, the solution is neat. And on the left side, it's 256 to 1. And once it's dry, we're going to come back and reactivate it with uh, Hero. And we're going to wipe it down to see if there's any etching or any permanent damage the product did. And two things here to gauge a good quality product is when the product dries, you don't want to see any um, chalkiness or any white haze from the surfactants. That means that it's a caustic ingredient. You want to see clear surfactants, which we did see here. So we do know that the, the formulation is high quality. And also there's no permanent etching or damage from uh, both dilution ratios. Now for the next test, we're going to try 256 to 1 on bug guts here on my coated windshield. And the windshield is coated with uh, Soft 99 Glaco. And as we see, it didn't do too well uh, removing the bugs. We do, we do still see a lot of uh, bug guts left behind and they kind of smear all over. So it didn't really clean good. So nothing impressive there. So for this test, I want to check the product's emulsification capabilities and limitations. So I sprayed 256 to 1 and 128 to 1 on the dirty fender well. And I just kind of let it dry. I just wanted to see how much it's able on its own to uh, dissolve and pull from that surface. And unfortunately, uh, I even tried 32 to 1. And all three dilution ratios did not really remove much contamination. So it looks like it did reach its limits there. Now for the next test here, I wanted to check the emulsification capabilities on the panel. Right above the exhaust, it created a film. And I wanted to see how well it, uh, it's able to break down that uh, exhaust fumes film. So it did really good there. And here I tested here a 256 to 1 on a matte uh, wheel. It's not really soiled, it's just uh, light uh, dust and contamination. Uh, but I just wanted to see how safe it is on a more delicate surface and how well does it clean. And I didn't have any concerns uh, with light agitation with a microfiber towel. 
it was able to lift most of the con contamination up from the surface and it left a, a clean uh, finish behind. Now next here, I want to try Hero on glass. So I tried the interior glass here, tinted glass at 256 to one. And we did see the window had some smudges on there. Now it was able to remove the smudges and it didn't leave any streaking behind, but I noticed that at 256 to one, the user experience wasn't really that great. Uh, the towel did feel grabby. So I decided to use it at 128 to one on the outside uh, of the window. And I noticed the user experience was day and night. I noticed that the towel was gliding way more effortlessly on uh, the surface, on the glass. It cleaned a lot better. It flashed much quicker than the 256 to one dilution ratio. And overall it was a better experience in my opinion. Uh, but both uh, dilution ratios didn't leave any streaking behind uh, and they both cleaned fairly well. But I do prefer 128 to one for glass personally. And here I want to check Hero at 256 to 1 on my interior panels. Now I know that Hero doesn't have any directions or doesn't have any recommendations on using uh, their product on interior for interior cleaning. But rinses, washes, generally speaking, are versatile products and most of us use those for interiors. So I just wanted to check it here on my uh, interior panels just to see how well it cleans at 256 to 1. I wanted to see if it alters the finish, if it gives it a more sh shine or if it... Uh, uh, makes it a little bit slicker or whatnot. So I didn't notice anything like that. It left a really natural finish behind and it didn't damage anything. Uh, and here I also checked the product out at 32 to one on more soiled uh, high touch areas like the steering wheel. And I noticed uh, again, no difference, no altering. Uh, it did clean better on the heavier soiled panels. It left a really natural finish behind. It didn't uh, feel slicker or didn't uh, alter it in terms of making it shinier or whatever. Uh, so I noticed that uh, it did really good on interior panels and it was safe. All right, so when it comes down to the user experience, uh, here's where things got a little bit interesting for me. The, when I tried this product that uh, they recommended 256 to one dilution ratio in the bucket and uh, pre-sprayed with 256 to one on the panels, my truck was barely soiled. It just mainly had some dust on it. And both of my vehicles for disclaimer are ceramic coated. And this product here uh, on my truck did uh, fairly well as a pre-spray at 256 to one. And it did really good at a contact wash as well. I tried it with both wash mediums. I tried it with the ultra safe sponge and I tried it with uh, Dito Popo's wash mitt. Now I did notice that with the sponge, it felt a little bit grabby. I, it wasn't sliding as much as I would like it to over the surface, whereas that wasn't the case with a microfiber. Now, the issue with the microfiber, as we saw, is that when you reintroduce it into the soiled uh, bucket, it will mar, especially this type of microfiber. So I'm going to discard this moving forward for my rinse wash test because uh, it's not appropriate for rinse washing. However, the ultra safe sponge, even though it did feel grabby, uh, during the testing, we did see that it was a, the safest uh, wash media option. And so even though I didn't notice any significant uh, marring or damage at that 256 to one dilution ratio that they recommend, I wasn't enjoying the contact wash process. I would have liked my sponge to glide a little bit more on the surface. Now where Hero did impress me, and I haven't experienced this with any other uh, rinse and wash, the drying process was so slick and it felt really, really nice on the towel when I was drying it. Um, it was just a really pleasant experience. So that's the one characteristic that really uh, stuck out over the competition. Now, when it came down to washing my other vehicle, which was heavier contaminated, uh, when it came down to spraying the 256 to one as a pre-spray, even though we did see some pretty decent uh, emulsification happening, when it came down to the contact wash, I wasn't comfortable with how much soil the vehicle still had on the surface uh, to go in with a contact wash at 256 to one. The lubrication was there, it's just that because of the, how heavily soiled or borderline uh, soiled the vehicle was, I felt that uh, 256 to one for this product here was not enough for me. So what I did is I uh, switched up my wash bucket and I added uh, Hero at 128 to one. So I did two ounces per two gallons. And for my pre-spray, uh, I used a 32 to one dilution ratio. 
And I noticed a significant uh, difference in terms of user experience and safety when I was washing the vehicle. So the 32 to one uh, tend to break down the contamination and emulsify much quicker. I noticed that uh, when I started my contact wash at 128 to one, the sponge actually started gliding over the surface and that's what I was looking for. I didn't notice any drag. I didn't have any concerns with the uh, product marring. I felt like there was enough lubrication and it brought me back to questioning all of their dilution ratios they have on their bottle. Personally, for me, what I think is that this product here is not concentrated enough for a 256 to one dilution ratio or any of the recommended ratios uh, for that matter. I can tell that the formulation is high quality. I can tell that uh, the surfactants are very powerful and very effective and safe in here. But what I think needs to happen, and this is going to be my feedback for ADS, and I hope they take this as a constructive feedback. It's not a negative thing. Um, Based from my testing and experience, and especially for this testing here I did with both of my vehicles, I think they either need to go and make this formula more concentrated if they want to stick with these standard dilution ratios, or they need to change their dilution ratios, period. So my recommendations would be for contact wash to be at 128 to 1, um, pre-spray 32 to 1, I would get rid of the waterless wash period because waterless washes should not exist in car detailing period. And being a company that has a good product like this, we did see on the test it did more. So I wouldn't even recommend anyone um, promoting waterless wash. And for the clay lubricant 128 to one and even 164 to one didn't cut it. So maybe they need to shy away from these suggestions or recommendations on how to use this product. I think a drying aid would be a good alternative for this product. So even if you did do a soap wash, this product here, because it glides really nice at 128 to one, I noticed that uh, it's a sweet spot for even uh, a drying aid, but it feels safe as a contact wash. I don't feel 256 to one does this product justice. That's just purely my opinions uh, based on the testing that I did here today and based like from my experience with this product uh, overall. So as it stands right now with these dilution ratios, I wouldn't really say that this product is uh, my favorite or I don't really think it's like the best product out there. The only thing at these dilution ratios that really stuck out to me was the drying experience. I felt the towel was really gliding over the, the surface. But other than that, I didn't notice anything special. If something I wasn't comfortable washing my vehicles, doing a rinse and wash, with a 256 to one. So as it sits, it's not going to be my favorite, but if you try it with the recommended dilution ratios I just suggested, you will see a huge difference. But then the counter argument with that is also, it's gonna be, you're gonna be using more product and it's gonna become more expensive. So what I would like to see from Hero is maybe offer a 32 ounce uh, size in this after maybe they alter the dilution ratios or maybe they make a more concentrated formula to give us a 32 ounce bottle for about $30 Canadian, I would happily pay for that. And I think that'll be more competitive because right now there's other rinses washes out in the market that have been out and vetted and have completed SDS sheets. They have been out there. We know their capabilities, they are proven. And it's really hard for someone to justify spending $26 using so much product and still not feel comfortable using this uh, over let's say other products that have been out there for a while and been proven. That's going to be my feedback. That's going to be my uh, opinion about this product, but don't take my word for it. Uh, check this out for yourself and see if it works for you. If, like I said, if your vehicle is lightly soiled or if you have just dust on your vehicle, it's going to be fine. But if you're looking to do a rinse and wash and your vehicle is a bit heavier contaminated, uh, it's going to struggle. So having said that, guys, uh, that's going to be a wrap for this video. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the content. Uh, please like and subscribe. And uh, until the next one, happy detailing. Take care.